anyways, um, another quick uh, how to do episode for Weeby Reptiles. I've had a few friends request this. I've been taking forever and doing it. I don't know what made me get all motivated and start making a bunch of videos this week, but uh, here we go. This is how to make your own incubator. The way I made mine is basically how you can make one of your own. It's simple, very easy, cheap, um, and you can make them basically at any size you like, depending on how big your breeding project is going to be. The basic idea of an incubator <clears throat> is just is just keeping a steady temperature without dropping or lowering and keeping the humidity at a proper amount. So you can build an enclosure and just add heating elements to it with uh, insulation and stuff like that. Or you can go the quick and cheap way, which is what I did and most people could do. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, that sticker, it's serious. Anybody touches these eggs and they're dead. But um, you basically get yourself a mini fridge or what I have here is a wine cooler. This was a wine cooler that a friend of mine was using, but he decided he no longer likes wine, so it became trash. So what I did was I took it and I emptied out all the working components out the back. <clears throat> and I took out the uh, working fans. You're not going to be able to see them, but they're in there. The rear fans basically <laughs> are still mounted to the motherboard of this unit. So when this is plugged in, those fans that are built into the uh, wine cooler are actually functioning and not circulating the air inside there properly. It's not something you need to worry about. It's just a feature that I... I utilize with this uh, mini fridge. Basically, if you get yourself an incubator, all you have to do is gut out all the working components out the back, uh, pre-drill yourself a couple holes in the rear so you can run your wiring, and um, what you're going to do is you're going to just insulate, <clears throat> you're going to line the inside. Okay, you guys are going to see I have some babies in there that are just hatching, acclimating to the temperature. I keep my babies in the incubator for a couple days. Uh, it's going to be a little dark in there. But basically what I have is I have heat tape on each side. Well, it's actually only on the back because it's a 12-inch heat tape that goes all the way in the back. And it's basically all you need. You don't need to wrap the entire thing with heat tape, which I don't understand why a lot of people did that. It's a waste of money. One sheet of heat tape, which my sheet is actually from top to bottom. I measured it out to be exactly 12 inches wide. And uh, I think it was uh, two and a half inches tall. So the unit that I have here, the piece that I bought is perfect for this. Heat tape doesn't get extremely hot. And you could basically tape it to the back of this. You don't have to have it mounted or do not drill holes through it. You will destroy the tape. So just tape it. Use some good quality clear packing tape and just tape it. The edges, not the entire piece, of course. Just the edges of the tape, of the heat tape to the, your back piece, side piece, whichever side you want to do. And um, after you've installed your heat tape, what that's going to do is your heat tape is going to continue bringing heat inside here, obviously, heat tape. What you're going to do is you're going to buy one of these. Now, you don't want to, uh, like, you don't have to buy these. You can actually go a little more expensive and spend the money on what they call uh, Spider Robotics, which has an amazing, um, they're called... Uh, hematrobes or something like that. I, p forgive me if I said the name wrong, but basically it controls your temperatures, voltage, the voltage that goes inside the unit you're using. What I'm using here is your cheap version. The brand is called Ranko. They sell these on eBay for $49.95. Shipped. 50 bucks. Okay. The Spider Robotics are about four to $500. This Ranko, uh, Ranko I've used, this is a new one actually, um, but this is just in case I wanted to start a new incubator, but the one I'm using back here, I've used this same Ranko, Ranko for three years and uh, has never once failed on me. Uh, I've luckily had no cooked eggs, <laughs> no spikes in temperature. Um, it's a great unit. And, I understand a lot of people are like, oh, but you know, you get what you pay for and blase squad, but this 50 bucks has been the best 50 bucks I've ever invested because my incubator has never failed on me. <clears throat> I'm not saying that it won't, but it has not yet. And I'm very happy about that because all together with my heat tape, my uh, voltage control meter, which is, that's what these are called, electronic temperature control. Basically, when you set the temperature on this, what it's going to do is you're going to put this probe this wire probe has got a thermostat on it. And you're going to put that inside your incubator. 
And this will basically shut off the power to your heat tape because you're going to plug in your heat tape to your Renko, to your Renko. And what's going to happen is when you, when the temperature on this thermostat, on this probe reaches to this unit, that it is the temperature you want it to be inside your incubator. That's not a correct temperature. That's off by three degrees. It's actually 83 in there. This is the one that's built for this unit and it's not really good, but back to this. Once it reaches the temperature that you've set your rank into, it's going to shut your heat tape off and no longer allow it to heat up the inside of the incubator. So it will then start to reduce in temperature. Now this also has a setting that when it reduces to a certain temperature, it kicks the power back on. This little unit right here is amazing. I mean, everybody wants to say you need all this crazy stuff, but like I said, two, three years, I've used the same one back there and it's never failed me once. Not to say it won't, but yeah, I've yet to have a problem. Thankfully, um, it's not hard, guys. It's really cheap. You get yourself a mini fridge. Go to the dump sites, you know, the large waste management centers. Get you a mini fridge. Sanitize it, bleach it, clean it, scrub it, de gut it out. You know, get all the working like the compressors and take all that heavy stuff out. Throw it all out and just line it with your heat tape. Get you a Renko uh, electronic temperature control gauge. You have to hardwire it yourself. Plug in your heat tape to it, and uh, that's it. I mean, like I said, if you find yourself a mini fridge, you can probably find one on, on Craigslist for free. Somebody throwing it away. Uh, curbside throwaway, freebie, whatever. If you live in a college town like I do, go dumpster diving. Every semester, kids are throwing away mini fridges left and right. Get yourself a little mini fridge. Get you a big one if you want. If you think you're going to be a big baller, top baller breeder and you're going to need all this excessive space, get you a big incubator. You want to go extremely big and think you're like, you're going to be like, like, I don't know, flukers or whatever you think you're going to be like, get you a nice small fridge. You can get a freezer if you want <clears throat> and line the inside of that and line it with some he a heat tape. It all depends on, on the size of the projects you plan on doing. If you feel like you're going to be doing some of the most largest breeding ever which if you are please don't ever contact me because you're gonna piss me off for destroying the market but if you're gonna do that more power to you do what you gotta do build your incub your incubator to the size that you need it so me personally like i said i'm not a breeder i'm a novelist collector and a caretaker so i just need something to take care of those small little clutches i produce ever so often i'm the kind of guy that only produces maybe a thousand dragons a year if that, <laughs> that's even a lot. I don't even think I'll produce that many. But, you know, if you are that kind of person that wants to go big baller style, whatever you guys want to call it, big breeder, badass, you know, just make your incubator the way as you want it. You know, it's all in your discretion. Me personally, I like the smaller ones. I don't need a lot of space. So, hope this video helps you guys out. Um, they're very easy to make. You can make one of your own. Uh, I would suggest get yourself a couple of these stickers because if anybody touches your eggs, they might actually hurt your feelings. <laughs> Just a joke. Um, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, leave them on the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed it.